So, all right, joining us now is Matt Gibb, our new director at the DDA. Ooh. Welcome on board. Thank you and happy birthday, Kim. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, another milestone for you. Oh, so, yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's a good day. Now, obviously, you're, you're not a newcomer to this community. You have a long history in this community. You're a former township supervisor. Uh, you played a significant role in uh, having this building that we're sitting in right now uh, built. And, uh, yeah, you've done a lot for this community. Uh, are you a lifelong uh, Lake Orion resident? Did you grow up here in this area? Oh gosh, it's a it's a quick and funny story. So I was running for um, trustee. Gosh, when she was still in grade school, probably on these birthdays. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, another trustee, John Steimel, who's mm -hmm. another great longtime leader of the community. He and I are knocking on doors, and a, a guy asked me. He said, "Well, how long have you been here?" I said, well, "I moved in in 1995, and at that point it had to have been 12." 14 years that I lived in Lake Orion. And yeah. he said, well, you just moved in. You're one of the newcomers. Wow. <laughs> well, now I've been here 30 years. I still feel like a little bit of a newcomer. But uh, so not lifelong, but um, I have such a great appreciation and personal yeah. way since I grew up in an old historic home and giving tours and all that, the importance of the legacy of what this community is. So it's a yeah. great community. You came out right around the same time I did. I came out here late 93 into mm -hmm. 94, yeah. moved out here in 94. And, so yeah, yeah, 30 years goes by in the blink of an eye. It's good, I'm yeah. excited to be here um, in this studio because it was such an integral discussion as you and I have talked about many times yeah. of, of all of the incarnations of this great um, public asset that mm -hmm. is Orient Network Television. And to see it now and where it's come and where it's been and you got podcast rooms and all, <laughs> and this is, Joe, I can't thank you all enough for, for carrying the vision for the community, it's just, it's. Wonderful, and the, the fact that this was just going to be a little add-on piece so that we could even dream to afford this great Orient Center yeah. was all to the credit of the board of On TV, so it's great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, this is uh, my home away from home. I probably spend more time here than I do at home. <laughs> uh, what was it like when uh, when you were supervisor? What what are the accomplishments you think you're most proud of being uh, Orient Township supervisor? I'll be honest with you. The, the accomplishments are the team that was there. Right, the team that's here now. And, and I said the other day, our great supervisor we have now, Chris Barnett, has done such an excellent job of, you can be part of a community and have vision and you can pull things off. Like we, we did keep GM alive, but it takes all of that team behind it. Mm -hmm. Now they're gonna build electric vehicles there and the battery, all of those little things. That water tower was instrumental to keeping them there, but then that helps us on our water rates over all these years. The, you know, this building was, was the, the, the senior center was falling apart in the village, the old mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, church on Church Street. Yeah. And we concocted the idea, maybe it's the wrong word, we, we created the idea, <laughs> <Envision>. <laughs> collaborated the idea of, um, of maybe the village could move there. And then that means we got Lockhart's and 313 Pete's, it, all of these things. So what am I most proud of, of, of just being a small part of kind of the dream of this community of like how we can be better and bigger. And, and we've got great leaders in Kim and, and it's just, uh, that's the greatest thing that I can look back at. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's little things too, like I, I'm not even sure if you're aware of this little legacy, but every year uh, Orient Township has the summer sizzle uh, mm -hmm. out behind this building. And I remember one year when I was covering it, I was doing some research looking into the history of it. And what I discovered is during that recession that everybody went through around 2009, That's 2000. That's fun, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I had read that you're like, let's do something to just lift the spirits yeah. of people around here. Yeah. And so it started out, I think, at Civic Center Park, and it was just a barbecue, hot dog, stuff for the kids. And here, all these years later, it's still going and it's more popular than ever. So mm -hmm. it's little things I, like that. I think that's the special nature of who we are as a community, right? Uh, that, you know, a small group of people can come together and have an idea. I mean, look at the miracle field we Correct. have now. Look at all of these unbelievable things we have. I mean, Summer Sizzle was cool. And in those times, Joe, that, you know, when, when um, I got elected in 2008, shows you how old I am now, <laughs> as supervisor, um, you know, I got the call, it was confidential. Um, you know, GM's gonna go bankrupt after the first of the year and I couldn't <laughs> tell anybody, oh right? I was gosh. threatened with all of these things. And so, you know, we survived through that, but that was a real difficult time, the yeah. recession. I mean, yeah, we, right. were, we were in harm's way. We had to lay off police officers. We had to shrink budgets. We had to do those things and somehow we made it. And I yeah. think part of this building and other things that we did were with the idea of we can just show an outward 
face that we can do things. Like we can really achieve things even in the face yeah. of all of this. Um, and, we, and we did it, and the sizzle was cool. I wish we would have had a soccer tournament that went with it. I always thought that was a great name for a soccer tournament, the summer <laughs> sizzle. Summer sizzle <laughs> soccer but, tournament. Uh, that's great. That's right. Yeah. So fairly recently, uh, the DDA, it's, I don't want to say the funding was threatened, but there was a faction out there who uh, wanted to see the DDA go bye-bye. And it went to the voters, and the voters uh, showed up, and they voted to save the DDA. And personally, I didn't think there was any doubt. I really didn't think it was any jeopardy, and, and luckily the voters came through. Uh, but almost immediately after that election, our, our executive director, Molly, ended up leaving. And uh, I was like, oh no, you know, we, mm -hmm. we fought to save the DDA and now our director's leaving. And I'll, you know, I get these email alerts uh, at my desk and it says, uh, new uh, director hired Matt Gibb. And I'm like, I know that you know dude. that guy. <laughs> uh, why? Why did you want to get involved with the DDA? What motivated you to throw your hat in the ring for that? When you are part of a community that you love, and I was very active um, yeah, you a are. long time ago. And then I wasn't as active because I was onto a new role. I mean, I went and worked for Brooks Patterson at the county, and we did great mm -hmm. things there. Uh, and then how do you get back engaged in a community that you love? And um, I'll be honest with you, leadership is tough. It's like when you, when you go through those circles and you're like, well, I'll just come back, it's not as, as easy a path. And so when Molly left, and I know that the DDA now is, they, they bought the Lumberyard property, which is um, great history, but boy, wouldn't it be nice if it was a little bit more pleasant to look at for <laughs> our community? Um, and maybe spurn some growth in our, our, our community. Uh, when she left and the job came open, um, I prayed on it a little bit and really thought, man, that might be an opportunity that I could get back involved. And so, Joe, I, I just applied for it like everyone else. So yeah. there was great candidates that applied for the job. Um, and we went through a rigorous interview process. And um, I'm just grateful that maybe this is a place for me to get reengaged in, in our community. And so when you say, why'd you do it? Well. Um, I didn't really need a job, um, <laughs> I had lots of jobs, um, but I just looked at it as um, something that could be real beneficial for me and the community. And my wife was the clinching blow of the whole thing. I was really second guessing, is this something I should do? Am I even qualified to do this? Maybe I'm not qualified to do this. She said, would the work make you happy and make mm. you really excited about Lake Orion again? And she says, if you can go into it with that attitude and come out and say, yeah, this is the spot that I'll get re-energized, and I came out of that last third interview process and I'm like, I, I, I can't wait if they pick me, <laughs> just pick me, please. <laughs> and so here I am. It's a long-winded answer, but that's, that's, that's why I'm at the doorstep. So. And you were, you were fairly active because there were a number of years where I would cover Dragon on the yeah. Lake and there you were in the park helping to coordinate the chaos of the Dragon yeah. Boat races. <laughs> so you still had your toes in the water, so to speak, and uh, still was active in what was happening in, in Lake Orion. I mean, one of the things that, that we'll tackle at the DDA is not only rebuilding the, um, I've said to a lot of people, we're at an inflection point right now. Like all of these shiny projects are happening. You all in the township yeah. are facing some of the same Very dilemmas. Yeah. That there's these shiny projects that happen. And then what happens underneath it all? What yeah. percolates underneath? And so in, in the downtown for all of us, which is the village, and our DDA district, we have really great family businesses yeah. that are, at an inflection point. Can I afford the rents that are now going up because we have all of these shiny objects? Or mm. can I find the staff? Can I do those types of things? And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for that work, but what the inflection point is as a community is, you know, those events is so many small amounts of hands are doing so much. Right. So how do we change that, right? And so I'm grateful that they invited me back into things like Dragon on the Lake. You know, we started that festival when Sue Turpin and Reggie Harrison and Lisa Cummins came in and I was the supervisor at the time and they said, we want to have this festival, do you think we could have a beer tent? And I'm like, what are you even talking about? Right? And so <laughs> it, it, just to be part of things is, and help percolate maybe a broader sense of volunteerism in the community was something I'm yeah. really excited about. Yeah, in the, in the 30 years that I've been here, you know, to see what has happened to this community, specifically the downtown area too. I mean, I remember, in the 90s, businesses came and went, came and went, came and went, and there was always vacancies. And I remember at one time there was something like eight or ten salons at Flint and Broadway, you know. And to see it evolve to become this 
walkable destination with so much to see and do and places to eat. Um, what's the vacancy rate right now? Like it's almost non-existent, isn't it? Mm. Well, you would think so, all right? Uh, if, you, if you look behind the curtains a little bit, um, things are changing. You know, Keller Williams um, took over the space um, where Nuts About Chocolate was and the Elixir right. closing shop that a lot of our teens, I'm sure your oh, yeah, kids all shop there a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Um, and so they're, they're finding a new place. Like they want to stay in the community, where would they be? And so, yeah, the space is filled. Um, you know, but then there's some, you know, some spaces around the corner. The, the 20 Front Street team has been working with Christian Mills, a longtime lifelong resident. Right. You know, what does Christian do with the fact that his costs are way up because inflation right. and other things? And then so I've got to pass along those rents. And then you take a, a beautiful venue like 20 Front Street and then they say, OK, well, we can absorb as much as we can absorb. Um, but, you know, they can't exactly say, OK, we're going to charge forty eight dollars a ticket. You know, right. all of this economy is happening. And so while the vacancy rate looks good, the real direction of where we are from an economy in our community is kind of balancing that against where are we going to end up in three years and five years and, yeah. and helping. And so, you know, maybe a, maybe a talkative guy like me can help in that equation. <laughs> now, we were talking about this before uh, we went live on the air. So I was driving south on M24 and I saw all that green fencing. And there's going to be a number of structures that are going to be taken down. One we talked about is going to be moving. The uh, Victorian home, I mm -hmm. believe, is going to get relocated. Uh, and then all this new, uh, I, I would imagine most of it's residential, right? That's going to be going there, the most Sherry developments. Talk about the impact that that development is going to have on this community. Well, you know, one is, is it's taking some of our history. And I know that was mindful why they're moving one of the structures. If people are like, you can't just bulldoze our history. But by the yeah. same token, you know, communities that are stagnant are communities that are dying. And and that means for all of us. And, and you have to have the vibrancy of investment and newness. And so that Mosheri development is gonna be a lot of newness, but it's gonna be a pricey newness, right? They're, they're talking about price points at the high end to rent those properties might be as high as $6,000. Now wow. it comes with a boat slip and I jokingly said the other day, it's come with a boat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. you know? um, and so that, that will have a, a, a lasting impact. But here's what it'll also do is, um, Orient Marine's been empty for three years. And, right. and so it's gonna clean that up and it's gonna create a yeah. newness that when you're coming into our community, if you've never been here, you'd be like, wow, this is, yeah. look at this place that they have. They've got this history and they've got this newness. It's gonna redesign some traffic flow, which will be very helpful. It's going to get rid of some older things that quite frankly are maybe a little blighted in, mm -hmm. in the community. Uh, the Lumberyard Project, no different, right? It's, it's a little bit blighted, no matter its history. What does it mean in the long term? Um, we have to have a mentality that we can't be priced out of paradise, right? We're living as a vacation. Yeah. You can't suddenly have a whole community that can afford to have four or five or $6,000 a month in rent. Right. You still have to have people that can be here that are our friends and our neighbors and our workers and our, our people that serve great dinners in the downtown. We have to have all of that. So what does it mean? We have to get real strategic about how we diversify ourselves and how we look at housing as a component, how we look at offices and we look at different things and not just be we want to grow we want to grow we want to grow how do we get more strategic in the way we diversify that economy um, and it's a community thing it's not just our DDA district so um, maybe not a specific answer but I'm anticipating this really hard inflection point in two years of can can Dia at Sagebrush can Matt at the at the, uh, the Johnny Blacks can Burge at the at the Fork and Pine, and Drew at the three, you know, yeah. where are the worker is going to come from. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. when you see this in other communities, that's what we have to plan right now. Don't yeah. wait for that to happen, but start planning right now. So We, we talk about this, I'm sorry to mean that, but like this comes up a lot at, at the planning commission level, because I'm on mm -hmm. the planning commission for the township as well. <clears throat> and we're always, where are those people going to live? Where's this attainable housing? We don't say affordable, attainal, attainable is probably a nicer way to say it, but um, we see a lot of developments that are like, it's gonna be great because they're gonna be high end and luxury and right. all this stuff. And it's, it's like, that, well, that's great, but we have children that may wanna live here, right? And where do they go? Where do they live? Yeah, well, some of mine have left because there's nowhere for them to go in, in this area to, to uh, be able to afford. So there is that, that tiptoeing and, and that balance. And then you, you know, we hear a lot too that, 
millennials don't want to buy houses, but I find that to be untrue. I think, you know, I think they do. They do want to live here. Well, they, they, they certainly do when they, they say, well, I could pay rent. Even the project mm -hmm. that Kyle Westberg, who's a lifelong member of our community, is doing at the Eman Center. Mm -hmm. and, and I've been helping him on that project, converting the school into a historic preservation project. So yeah. we preserve the history and 31 loft units will go in there one and two bedroom and then another building that will be mimicked of the history. Um, but the price points are $1,800 to $2,400. So if a, if a young person can buy a house and their yeah. mortgage payment's $1,100, I mean, to me, it's a no brainer. Really, yeah. It's like, why would I do that? So um, it, it's a challenge, but it's one that we can, we can meet as a community. Uh, really, it's easy for I us. Agree. We're the place people want to be anyway. That's why, that's why most Sherry's coming. It's right. like we, are the community that people want to be in. We just have to find a balance. We have the fact that there was a double-decker steamship 100 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Don't forget that. People came out here on a rail car, you know? So. Yeah. And my concern is uh, a rising tide when it comes to rents in that development. Is that going to affect all rents across the board? My rent has doubled in since 2015. Almost 10 years my rent mm -hmm. has doubled. Uh, when I start hearing $6,000 a month for rent, people that are residing in Lake Orion are plant workers and business uh, owners and, and stuff like that. Who's going to be able to afford those rents? Is I don't know, do you envision that? Do you envision rents all over saying, well, they're charging 6000 we can charge 2000 It would be a bargain. Well, I I if, you, if you think about... Um, diversifying the way that you think about a whole community. Like a whole community has walkable areas that integrate with each other, that you have a blending. And remember, you know, Lake Orion is a hundred plus year old icon of prosperity. And the fact that the Mosheri family, those boys are gonna, they're gonna build beautiful product for it. It's gonna be beautiful there. Well, you know, it is lake living. It is out there on the lake. And if you wanted to buy a house on the lake, Joe, I, I couldn't afford it right now. I mean, it's, it is what it yeah. is. So it's what we do with the rest of it. It's yeah. what the township does around the village and to the south and to the north and really thinking about how we, we build a sustainable kind of community. And so it's there. I, I don't think there's going to be this rising tide that suddenly everybody will get priced out. One, one of the greater concerns I have is, is are we paying attention to the, the culture of of entrepreneurism in our yeah. community. Are we really paying attention to that? Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to say we're gonna get another restaurant, because restaurants can seem to absorb that type of stuff, but um, you know, can the green hippos of the world yeah. be replicated uh, in a different way that builds out this really dynamic, walkable community that mm -hmm. we want? Mm -hmm. um, that's a larger concern, and that's gonna be the initial programming effect that we really do at the DDA, is building that, that those pillars that have that support network. I think that's why it's really important to for people to know why there is this collaborative effort and, and always has been in, in as far as I can remember in the last 10 years and even with Elena at the chamber before I was there, you know how the township and the DDA and the chamber has always worked together mm -hmm. to foster all of that everywhere, right? So um, y having you back, right? We did ribbon cuttings together and you were always there supporting that um, and having your knowledge and, and that entrepreneurial spirit, which I know you have, um, I think it's really important to continue those collaborative efforts, you know, so that it's it's a little bit more far and wide. I mean, we're coming with America and Bloom soon, and you know, hopefully yeah. we can get you on board with that because we snake, you know, Molly into that. So that's coming. So we're gonna need you to help us, you know. Well, if you if you walked around my yard and you realize I have things that bloom from the beginning to the snow flies, there you um, go. I have it in my heart a little bit. <laughs> to, okay, uh, see, uh, I think it's just that collaborative to, to have effort, that. Though. Yeah. You know, to to the point, the the best thing that we can do as a community is to recognize that we've been really successful. Mm -hmm. um, but successful communities have these points where um, we need to really have a good understanding of everybody's talent pool. Yeah. It's easy to have success when you, when it's just running downhill. Sure. And but we're going to hit. You know, inflation's starting to hit its point. You know, my former job of the economic development uh, chief at Oakland County, it was my job to know when these things are happening. And our real estate market is, it is what it is. I mean, if you're if in the downtown, someone wants to charge thirty or thirty-five dollars a square foot, and a lot of people watching the show may well, what does that mean? Um, we'll just do the math. I mean, multiply 35 times 3,000 and you get right. the math. That's what you have to pay in rent, mm -hmm. right? 
And so, you know, those inflection points are happening. And so if we can say, what, what's our real talent base? Like, mm -hmm. what talent can the chamber bring that they're not duplicating what the DDA can fulfill? And that what we're, we're kind of wrapping around the corner on some other ideas and we really get targeted, um, then you start to fill in those gaps and you don't have the dip. And Brooks yeah. and I used to call it recession proof. Mm -hmm. And that's the work we're gonna be doing at the DDA is, is when somebody says, I got an opportunity for a grant, I don't know where to start. We never want them to say that. We want them to say, I got this opportunity for a grant. I've got a meeting next week with the exact people in my community that can help me. Yeah. And we're gonna quickly close that gap so we can Great. answer that question. Great. Uh, we're just about out of time, but before we go, uh, I want you to give an update of the Lumberyard Project. Um, when, when you took the job, I'm sure that's one of the things that was laid out in front of you. Like, here's the vision, here's what we want to do. Can you give us a timeline and what's going to be happening with that property? So you'll, you'll see in the next 60 days that um, the, the concept plans that were roughed out um, will be, um, oh, they're up there, yeah. yeah. Uh, the concept plans will be, will be more refined, meaning we're going to bring out of the woodwork that network of people. There was some concern in the interview process of Matt, are you just going to ask your friends? Yeah, I'm going to ask my friends because that's who <laughs> knows how to do this, right? So you'll see the, pl the plans get refined. There's a lot of core work that has to do. The, the, the property that's between the bike trail and the lumber yard is owned by MDOT. Well, that's a starting point, right? So you're going to see that, Joe, that we're going to approach this not as a community that says we've got this, uh, wouldn't it be cool if somebody develops it? We're going to do the work that gets it developed um, going forward. But while we've got some time, uh, in the meantime, next week we start um, letterboxing. Um, uh, geocaching for, oh, for businesses that. across the state. And there's other communities across the state that do this. Um, uh, I'm really fortunate that the board also restructured. So they hired Janet Bloom, mm -hmm. who uh, was the interim, and now she's the assistant director. We're kind of like co-directors a little bit. So she's feverishly putting this together. Um, um, uh, Teresa Rutt, who's on the village council, is an artist. She's carving stamps that are unique to Lake Orion. And there's going to be um, clues and boxes around the downtown area that over the whole month of April you can go and you can find these stamps. Um, and we didn't realize that people from all over the state, other than the Midwest, they come yeah. to places like this just to do this. And yeah, so, yeah. It's cool. so look for that. Um, I know that the Small Business Week at the beginning of May, we're going to yep. really be enhancing Small Business Week. The flower fair is coming up um, uh, mid-May, going towards Memorial Day. Even though that's an art center event, um, it's you know it's within our our Ballywick to mm -hmm. uh, to do that. And then uh, next week we're going to be meeting with our business community and just watch in the community that we're going to be putting out this little book of big solutions that is mm -hmm. kind of a new mentality of the DDA. That's not just about promoting and attracting people to our downtown, but it's helping those businesses get resources yeah. um, so that we never even has to have to ask the people. The people just come because they're like, this is so dynamic, we have to be there. So over the next 60 days, you're gonna see that Lumberyard project mm -hmm. get going, you're gonna see some of these other things get going, but um, you know, uh, our downtown is, is uh, really dynamic. Um, the trolley runs uh, uh, mm -hmm. from Oxford. We just won an award last Thursday, oh, great. taking up on filibustering last bit of time here, but we just won an award <laughs> from Thrive, Oakland County's program that replaced the one-stop shop and some of the other things we did. Um, so it's an award-winning town, and so come and enjoy it and uh, yeah. find those little stamps. I love that bond that's been formed between downtown Oxford and dot downtown Lake Orion and yeah. the trolley that commutes people back and forth. Uh, I love passing that trolley. I always see it and it, it just adds character to it does. our downtown. <laughs> it's really great to see. Yeah, we've got to we've got to get the township to do trolley rides so you can have a dinner in downtown and a concert at Wildwood. There you go. And, oh. uh, you know, why not? Why and not? Just, just expand the breadth of it. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a really exciting time. I really love seeing what's happening uh, in the village and the township. And uh, it's a great time to be a, an Orion resident. And I'm proud to live here. There's just something about this community. And uh, I envision great things coming from uh, your office. Well, we're hopeful to par continue to partner with On TV, yeah, and uh, you and I have talked about that. So watch for more to come on, on spread the word of the excitement of who we are. Awesome, and thanks for coming down and.